Hi guys, my name is Michelle and this is the first video that I'm posting on YouTube. Okay, so maybe it's not the first video that I've posted on this channel, but let's just say that this is the first of my consistent content here on YouTube. Now, before I started posting, I thought I'd just get on here and tell you a little bit about myself so that you know where I'm coming from and what you can expect from my channel. So let's talk about why I started this channel. For those of you who know me, you know that I practically live on YouTube. Sometimes I average six to seven hours on YouTube. So I guess it was only a matter of time before I picked up a camera and started my own channel and filming for myself. I have been talking about starting a channel for years now. And now that we're in lockdown and the world is going through what it is, I thought it was high time. I had no more excuses anymore. I thought, let me just do this. I live in Calcutta and I'm a singer, songwriter, vocalist, whatever you want to call me. So yeah, I'm a singer, which means that I perform a lot on stage. I have been over the years. And I guess when I first started singing, I didn't believe that makeup, hair, looks, presentation, I didn't think all of these things were factors in live performances. I felt like my talent should speak for itself. If people have come there to listen to me sing, how does it matter what I look like? So yeah, I was very, very naive going into the whole music thing. Now, I sing internationally and domestically. And I remember my first trip to London when I went to sing. I had a bare face with just a little kajal on my eyes, nothing else, absolutely nothing else. And I saw the other performers and I was completely freaked out, I was like, what have I gotten myself into? And I saw them perform and I realized ultimately it's showbiz, right? You're putting yourself out there and you're performing. Performing is very different from singing you have to be able to present yourself in a way that makes you feel very confident and makes the crowd feel nice and engaged. So I realized that makeup was a very, very big aspect and a factor and it didn't have to take away from the kind of vocalist or the singer that I am. So yeah, not knowing anything about makeup, I freaked out, I came back home and then I had another performance in London so I had to go back the next month and then that is when I was like, okay, now I do a bit of research. I'm gonna get on YouTube. I'm gonna look at a lot of beauty content. I'm gonna see what this entails and I'm gonna paint a face and I'm gonna learn the skills required. Now, with learning the skills that were required, I think I also bring a unique perspective to the makeup game and I'll tell you why. No, I'm not a makeup artist, okay? I have not been trained. But over the years, I've had to pick up skills that would make my makeup last for several, several hours. A lot of the times when I sing, I go for sound check in the morning, which means makeup, hair done, and that has to last me till my performance. And sometimes my performances start at 11 o'clock at night, at 12 o'clock at night. So I think I understand what it takes to increase the longevity of your makeup. Uh, there are a lot of things that have also happened in the past. Like for example, wearing glitter, I'm on stage, I'm jumping around, I'm doing my thing, I'm sweating. The glitter drips down my eyes. I have mascara dripping all over my face. I'm sweating, I look like a hot mess. And because of that, I guess I've had to teach myself different skills to make sure that, you know, when I'm working with glitter and I'm on stage and it's going to be an atmosphere or an environment where I have to move around, where I'm sweating, where everything is absolutely crazy, my face still needs to look like it is completely put together. Hopefully, I'm able to share some of those skills with you if you're looking for makeup that is suited to the stage specifically. Okay, so hair, I'm a curly girl, but my hair didn't always look like this. With the stage and with me performing, I have put my hair through so much abuse. I think I've put my hair through a decade of straightening and curling and extensions and coloring, what not, you name it and I've done it. My friend came over one day and she told me that, hey, I think your hair might be wavy, curly. Why don't you check out the curly girl method? 
and I was like great let me do some research let me check it out and when I checked it out I realized that okay there's supposed to be a transition period but I'm always performing and I'm always on the go so I never really had the time to transition my hair now with lockdown I've had some time and so finally I'm on my curly hair journey I couldn't be happier Guys, trust me, this is the first time I'm able to wear my natural hair without doing anything to it that causes damage. When I was doing my research and looking up the curly girl method, obviously I was looking for content creators from India. Because if you watch American girls or girls from uh, different countries, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll teach you what you need to know, but the products that are available to them will not necessarily be available to us. So I was looking for girls in India with 2B hair, 2A, 2B hair from India so that I could learn about the different products etc. And what I realized was there was no representation for the wavy community. You had a lot of curly girls from India but very few wavy girls from India. And then I guess I realized that sometimes you have to be the representation that you want to see out there which is why I created this channel specifically for curly girls like me from India with 2B hair there are a lot of things that I wish I knew when I started my curly girl journey and hopefully I'm able to share some of my tips and tricks with you for me this would be month 5 of my curly girl journey and I think I've done pretty well I think my hair is my hair is behaving and if you saw my hair before this maybe I'll insert a picture it's very very embarrassing if you look at what my natural hair used to look like it used to be like this 80s hair I thought it was straight with a lot of frizz but yeah it was essentially like 80s hair but yeah I transitioned I'm very happy about it I think I've been able to achieve a decent semi half decent result Hey, I'm not claiming to be a professional here. I'm not saying that what I say on my channel is the be all and end all, okay? Get all your information here. That is not what I'm trying to say. All I'm trying to say is I've learned a lot in the past five months when it comes to my hair and hopefully by sharing my experiences with you guys, maybe potentially it could help you out. I also have PCOS and with PCOS, <laughs> I keep saying it is the gift that keeps on giving. I've had to struggle with a lot of things recently. I started getting cystic acne. I went through severe weight gain and weight loss. I went through all of that. I think it's a struggle and I think it's important to have content out there that helps PCOS, helps us girls with PCOS traverse through the myriad problems that come with this ailment. Another thing that you can expect from my channel is for all of my content to be completely cruelty free. I do not believe in animal testing. So everything you see on my channel, every single product I use always will always be cruelty free. I'm also not too big on consumerism. I like to manage with what I have. I don't believe in only high-end makeup or products. I feel like most of us just want to find good products that we can use, that we can afford more importantly. And so my channel is always going to strive to keep it real. I'm always going to keep it real. I'm always going to talk about makeup that is affordable and sometimes I'll throw in a few products that I feel are worth it and that you can invest in. By education, I am trained in clinical psychology. I have my master's. In fact, I worked in a clinic as well for a few years. And then I went into finance. Now, I'll tell you why I went into finance. When I was working in the clinic, I loved my job. I absolutely loved my job. But I realized that counseling people for eight hours a day with no break for three and a half years caused me to burn out emotionally. I was completely burnt out and another thing was it did not pay the bills. I have always been super passionate about being self-sufficient and being self-made. So wealth management, wealth creation, finance, these things have always intrigued me and I always wanted to get trained in financial sufficiency. Every single thing that I have today, I have because I've worked for it, I have saved for it, I have invested for it. Hopefully at some point, I look forward to sharing some of my wealth creation tips with you as well, if you're interested. 
Okay, so like I said, PCOS, the gift that keeps on giving. It means that I have always had to struggle with my weight. And so you can look forward to a lot of lifestyle vlogs from me where I focus on the methods and the tips and tricks that I have that help me maintain my weight. So in summation, what I'm trying to say is on my channel, you will see a lot of hair, makeup and lifestyle content. And hopefully that's something that you're interested in. If you are, then consider subscribing. I'll leave my Instagram handle down below. If you want to see more from me, you can follow me on Instagram. So that was it. That was my introduction video. I don't want to make it too long. That's all I had to say. Hopefully this is a channel that you enjoy and you like. And if you do, then don't forget to like this video, subscribe, notification bell, ding, ding, do all of that. And I'll see you in the next one.